Welcome to Mikon's hardware. In the past, I have already tried to test X79 LJ2011 platform and explain why I think this platform is no longer relevant in 2021. Still, people don't believe me, even though I have shown that E5 2690 is losing to E5 2620 V3 with about the same price. Many of you believe that I need to test unlocked E5 1650, which can be overclocked to more than 4 GHz. So, in this video, I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to test E5 1650 overclocked to 4.2 GHz and I'm going to compare it against Xeon E5 2640 V3. I believe that this comparison is very fair because E5-1650 is even more expensive than E5-2640 V3. But first, let's go through some boring technical specification. My E5-1650 was tested on Schwamway X79 E5M2011 motherboard. Unfortunately, on this motherboard, my 1650 was not stable at 4.3 GHz. Sure, in games it was running stable, but in Blender and Cinebench the system would crash if I push it to 4.3 GHz. For the memory, I have 32 gigs of Corsair DDR3, 4 sticks 8GB each, running at DDR3 1866CL10. I have tested multiple different DDR3 modules I have on my hands at the moment, and none of them were stable at DDR3 2133, that's why I decided to go with the DDR3 1866CL10, and the secondary and trinary timings were tightened as well. The rest of the hardware used for this test is very standard. My AMD RX 6800 XT graphics card, EVJ Supernova P2 750 power supply, and two SSD drives. 250 gigs for the system drive and 2 terabyte for the games. Sure, if you have an expensive X79 motherboard, then you can push E5 1650 to 4.5 GHz or maybe even higher. It could also be possible to achieve DDR3 2400 with expensive DDR3 memory modules. But this configuration makes even less sense, because the price goes above the roof and the power consumption increases as well. On the other hand, 4.2 GHz and DDR3-1866 is the typical X79 configuration you would be able to achieve with the Chinese X79 motherboards. With this, let's start the testing and we are going into ADA64 memory and cache results. Here, memory read, write, and copy speeds are almost the same between both of the Xeons. E5-1650 has better memory and cache latency values, but E5-2640 V3 has much better level 1 and level 2 cache read, write, and copy values. This advantage in level 1 and level 2 cache performance, as well as modern CPU instructions, help Xeon E5-2640 V3 deliver better gaming and productivity performance compared to E5-1650. CPU Z. Here is everything expected. Overclocked E5 1650 scores slightly better when a single core is used and slightly worse when all cores are utilized. 439 and 3133 points compared to E5 2640 V3, which has 377 and 3820 points. Cinebench R23 is another story though. This application uses modern CPU instructions, and here E5 2640V3, which runs at 3.4 GHz, is able to catch up with E5 1650 running at 4.2 GHz in single core performance. But E5 2640 has 8 cores, while E5 1650 has only 6 cores. Thus, single core performance is identical, while multi core performance is significantly better with E5 2640V3. 1650 scores are 820 and 5891. 2640 V3 scores are 818 and 7774 points. Blender is another productivity benchmark which I have validated. Here I render BMW and classroom scenes. E5-1650 overclocked to 4.2 GHz completes this test in 6 minutes 37 seconds for BMW and 20 minutes 20 seconds for classroom. E5 2640V3 is significantly faster. The BMW scene it completed in just 4 minutes and 32 seconds, while the classroom scene occupied E5 2640V3 for 12 minutes and 31 seconds. As you can see, the gap between these two Xeons is more than 30%. It's pretty clear that in productivity E5 1650 even overclocked to 4.2 GHz is a no match for E5 2640V3. Thus, let's take a look at some games. Far Cry New Dawn is a rather old and very not optimized game. Still, E5 2640V3, which has only 3.4 GHz, overtakes E5 1650, which runs at 4.2 GHz. E5 1650 scores 48 and 67 FPS, and E5 2640V3 is able to render 55 and 76 FPS. 
This is a really shameful result for overclocked E5, 6, and 50. Far Cry 6 is a newer title and it is very GPU demanding, yet E5 2640v3 is managing to beat E5 6 and 50 again. 6 and 50 renders only 37 and 71 FPS, while E5 2640v3 has slightly better values 35 and 79 FPS. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is another rather old and not optimized game. Here, E5 2640v3 is again on top. E5 6 and 50 is able to deliver only 19 and 50 FPS while E5 2640v3 with the Turbo Boost Unlock is able to deliver 21 and 57 FPS. The gap is not dramatic, but 2640v3 is still faster. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a much newer title which has pretty good optimization. In the past we have seen that performance in this game mostly depends on the graphics card. Still, in this particular test E5 2640v3 is able to beat E5 1650. 1650 renders only 69 and 115 FPS, while E5 2640v3 gives us 74 and 121 FPS. Watch Dogs Legion is very similar to Assassin's Creed Valhalla when it comes to the optimization. But unlike Assassin's Creed Valhalla, this game also demands a strong CPU. Here, the gap between these two Xeons is significantly bigger. E5 1650 renders only 51 and 73 FPS, E5 2640v3 delivers 61 and 85 FPS. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege is the only game which uses Vulkan API for this test. Even though the game loves fast CPU cores and depends on memory latency, E5650 at 4.2 GHz is not able to even closely match E5 2640v3. With E5650 we are only getting 217-262 FPS. E5 2640v3 gives us a much better result, 273 and 341 FPS. Thus, we can see that the minimal FPS with E5 2640v3 is better than the average FPS with E5 1650. Immortals Phoenix Rising. This is just another stone into the E5 1650 grave. Here, E5 1650 delivers only 13 and 56 FPS. 2640v3 gives a slightly better values, 16 and 62 FPS. In general, this game is very CPU demanding but not optimized. Thus, the results are pretty bad, but E5 2640v3 scores another win. F1 2021. This modern racing game also thinks that E5 2640v3 is a better CPU. With E5 650, we are getting 172 and 207 FPS, while E5 2640v3 renders 183 and 228 FPS. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is the last tested game, still E5650 is not able to score a win. Here it renders 69 and 99 FPS, while E5-2640v3 is able to deliver 73 and 116 FPS. As you can see, the gap between these two zeons is rather big. So, what do you think about these results? Are you convinced that X79 platform is no longer relevant in 2021? No? Okay, let's take a look at the power consumption. Testing Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where both of the Xeons are providing kind of the same performance, E5650 consumes about 420 Watt. Under the same conditions, system with E5 2640v3 consumes only 345 Watt. As you can see, the power consumption difference is rather big. Historically, Xeon E5 V0 and V2 CPUs are consuming significantly more power than Xeon E5 V3 and V4. But overclocked E5650 is a truly next level of power consumption inefficiency. A part of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, I have also tested Blender Benchmark. During this benchmark, system equipped with E5650 consumes 240 watts of electricity. Running the same benchmark system with E5-2640v3 not only completes it much faster, but also consumes significantly less power. In this case, the power consumption is about 161 watts. All in all, E5650 even overclocked to 4.2 GHz doesn't really have anything to compete with E5-2640v3. In most of the cases, performance is worse than E5 2640v3, power consumption is much higher, and the pricing is about the same. Thus, I believe that for X79 platform to be anyhow relevant in 2021, the prices must go down. And the prices must go down not only for the CPUs, but also for the motherboards. Otherwise, I see no point in buying X79 when you can buy X99. Of course, there is always going to be someone who is going to say that with a cheaper or weaker GPU such as GTX 1060 or AMD RX 580, the performance between these two Xeons will be identical, and they will be right. But the point is, 
Why would you bother with X79 if you can buy for the same money X99? X99 have better performance, less power consumption and a much newer platform. This should be enough to explain why I believe that X79 platform is basically obsolete in 2021. I hope it was interesting, I hope it was useful. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, bye bye.